Are we alone? This question, so simple at first glance, is in fact of incomparable importance. The search for extraterrestrial life has always been one of the most important aspects of modern space exploration. As is well known, however, we have not yet been able to discover extraterrestrial life forms or even to make contact with them. If one looks at the research results of the recent past, it seems as if the indications for the existence of alien life are becoming more and more solid. In today's video, you you can find out what experts have already discovered and what groundbreaking discoveries were made on Mars a few months ago. Want to join us on our galactic journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe? Then remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to stay up to date from now on. Feel free to show us you like the content of our videos with a thumbs up. The Search for Extraterrestrial Life When we think of extraterrestrial life forms, images of thriving, advanced civilizations thousands of light years away from our blue home planet may first come to mind. Despite all these spectacular thoughts in our heads, the real search for alien life takes place on a much smaller scale. The hypothetical life forms on other celestial bodies are located primarily in the microscopic spectrum. Due to our present technical means and our observable radius in space, the search for extraterrestrial life doesn't primarily take place in distant galaxies, but rather directly at our galactic doorstep. In order to narrow down the probability of a cosmic direct hit, the respective celestial bodies are first examined with regard to their potential habitability. This includes not only the chemical composition of the planet in question, but also its spatial position within its native system. According to our current state of knowledge, water in a permanently liquid form is an absolute cornerstone for the development of life. So that the life-bringing substance can be present in a liquid aggregate state, the corresponding celestial body must be in the so-called habitable zone of its cosmic home. This refers to the distance between a planet and its host star in which a celestial body must be located so that this basic requirement for liquid water can be met. No less exciting than the question of whether a planet is home to life forms is the question of whether the celestial body may have served as a home for extraterrestrial life forms in the past. When we approach this highly exciting topic, one particular planet is always at the center of scientific interest, Mars. The adventurous stories about exotic Martians are as old as star research itself. And in fact, we have already had the privilege of taking a close look at our immediate neighboring planet in the past as part of unmanned research missions. However, the images transmitted to Earth by the space probes lacked any sign of the existence of Martians. This doesn't mean in the reverse conclusion, however, that the red planet could not have represented nevertheless once a habitable celestial body, as per the spectacular realizations published recently in the course of a NASA study. Evidence for Life on Mars? For example, the Curiosity rover recorded an unexpected discovery beneath the planet's surface, which was covered in iron oxide dust. Specifically, the largely autonomous rover, which has been on Mars since August 6, 2012, was busy investigating a former lake. Equipped with the most modern instruments of our time, Curiosity took various soil samples around its landing site in the Gale Crater. The detailed investigation of these clay sedimentary rocks plays an essential role in the cosmic surface for extraterrestrial life forms. Indeed, clay is typically formed when rock minerals weather after contact with water. At the same time, clay's natural properties make it ideal for preserving microbial fossils. After NASA's land vehicle collected two samples of ancient claystone from different parts of the Dryad Lake, researchers discovered a startling detail during their in-depth analysis. Although the soil samples were both about 3.5 billion years old and only 1,200 feet apart, they had unmistakable differences in their compositions. Accordingly, one of the soil samples taken contained only half of the clay minerals expected by the scientists. Instead, it contained unexpectedly large amounts of iron oxides, the substance that gives Mars its characteristic reddish color. But how does this geological investigation relate to the question of extraterrestrial life? We become aware of this when we consider the reason given by the experts for the astonishing composition of the soil sample. In fact, the experts consider it likely that the composition of the soil was due to the effects of brine, 
this extremely salty water could have penetrated the mineral-rich clay layers. The brine then destabilized the corresponding soil layers and washed them away. In other words, this would mean that the parts of the geological, and possibly also the biological, traces on Mars were erased. Before Earth scientists were confronted with this extraordinary realization, they still believed that the soil composition in the Gale Crater had remained completely unchanged for billions of years. The process of chemical transformation in sediments is called diagenesis within the scientific community. In the context of such processes, it's possible that new life forms could have seen the light of day on the Mars world. The fossil signatures of those creatures that would have existed before this transformation would probably have been destroyed in the course of this process. Although no direct evidence for the existence of life on red Mars has been discovered so far, the knowledge gained will help significantly to narrow down the cosmic search for clues in the future. For example, experts now know that some parts of the Martian rock are better suited for interpreting traces of the past than others. However, the nature of the soil samples taken is not the only galactic clue that our neighboring planet may be home to extraterrestrial inhabitants. Methane Mystery in the spring of 2004, it became known that ESA and NASA experts had independently detected methane in the red planet's atmosphere. Ever since the chemical compound was discovered in the Martian realms, a pressing question burned in the minds of the researchers. Does the methane have a geological origin, or might it be formed by the metabolism of microorganisms? After all, similar research results on Earth brought the realization that the development and survival of life is possible even under very extreme conditions. Experts on our blue home planet came across conspicuous traces of methane in the Greenland ice at a depth of almost two miles, which came from methanogenic bacteria. These microorganisms are capable of withstanding even the most adverse external conditions, such as freezing cold, darkness, and lack of nutrients. For this reason, quite a few scientists consider it conceivable that the methane detected in the Martian atmosphere could also come not only from chemical geological processes, but also from comparable microbes. During the biological production of methane on Earth, ethane is almost always produced as an accompanying gas. If, on the other hand, the methane has a volcanic origin, for example, traces of sulfur dioxide can typically be detected. If we succeed in identifying the corresponding gases in the atmosphere of the red planet, we would be a great deal closer to solving the methane mystery on our neighboring planet. Presence of water on the red planet one thing is certain, Mars did not always have the dry and dusty appearance that it presents to us today. If we turn back the wheel of time by about 3.8 billion years, we would find large quantities of flowing water on the surface of Mars, which would come together to form gigantic seas. Experts estimate that up to 75% of the planet's surface could have been covered with liquid water at that time. However, it's commonly believed that the salinity of the Martian oceans may have been too high for most living things to evolve. But even here, there are exceptions. For example, we now know that Halobacterium is dependent on exceptionally high salinity levels in order to survive at all. The fact that Mars was able to enjoy such generous water resources billions of years ago was due to its denser atmosphere and higher average temperatures at that time. In the meantime, however, the natural protective shell of the celestial body has already lost large parts of its former density. For this reason, researchers agree that water cannot exist in a permanently liquid form on the red planet today. However, some evidence suggests that at least the polar regions of Mars are briefly graced by liquid water. As a result of solar radiation, tiny amounts of liquid water could form there just below the surface during the Martian day. A comparable effect is known on our terrestrial home from Antarctica. In addition, NASA employees recorded a unique find on the red planet a few years ago, according to their own statements. In detail, it concerned photographs of the planet's surface, which originated in an interval of seven years. On the later pictures, clear changes on the surface could be recognized, which actually appeared as if they were due to the effects of flowing waters. Since then, NASA has been discussing whether liquid water might also exist on Mars in addition to water ice. Now it's up to you. 
What are your thoughts on today's video? Do you think that Mars was once home to living creatures, or possibly still is? Write us your opinion, your suggestions, and your feedback to our contribution in the comments. Finally, take a look at the other exciting videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the thumbnails in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.